If you want to get a high paying marketing data analyst job without a degree, you need these five skills. And by the end of this video, you will be able to become skilled at least in one of these areas because I will show you how. I'm also going to be covering why these skills are the top skills that you need for this job title. And I'm going to provide resources on how to get better at them and my insider tips on the fastest way to get good at these skills as someone who has worked this job myself and have been part of the hiring and interviewing process on the other side of the table. So let's get straight into it and go to the first skill you need to be a great marketing data analyst. So the first skill you need is data visualization tools. So this is a huge uh, point about being a data analyst versus a marketing data analyst. Um, a marketing data analyst, they typically do a lot more with data visualization tools. Examples include Tableau, Looker Data Studio, uh, which is owned by Google. There's also Power BI. There's a lot of these data visualization tools that in the last two to four years have really rose up in the market. And I would argue it's one of the number one skills you need in this type of job title because these type of skills are highly sought after and no one has them and there's a rapidly growing demand for uh, marketing data to be visualized in a lot of these uh, companies and I, I've worked for an agency for many years uh, for about eight years now they are running full force with all these advertising channels and SEO and all these things. And leaders just want to see all these things crystallized at a high level in one dashboard. And to really be able to pull all these data sources together and use them, you really need to understand at least one data visualization tool, if not two or three or four. So my recommendation here is to start with Google Looker Studio, which is free. They'll also provide you with sample data that you can play with yourself and get really good at, even if you don't have a client yet. But if you can get a client, maybe even freelance, you can get a lot of experience pretty quickly. Number two, analytics tools. So these are different from data visualization tools because analytics tools uh, basically collect data on the website usage and then display them. Whereas data vis visualization is about pulling various different analytics tools together into one place. So one big example is Google Analytics 4. It's probably the most popular example that websites use, but there's others out there. There's Adobe Analytics, there's Amplitude, there's Mixpanel, there's Heap, the list goes on and on and on. And um, you'll, be, you'll notice that there's a rapidly decreasing uh, interest in Google Analytics because some of these other tools out there are doing things better, especially for mobile apps or uh, video games on mobile apps or um, just very special websites focused on conversion rate optimization or getting sales. And therefore, there's, they find things that Google Analytics can't track, that they're looking for someone who understands and has experience with these tools. And so the good news is there's a, not a lot of people out there who even know these tools exist, let alone are skilled in them. And so there's a huge opportunity right now to get skilled and trained in these tools. Now, some of them are really expensive, and your best bet is to find a client where you can work through the client to learn these tools. But for someone starting out and can't get that yet, uh, my next best recommendation would be to simply go and install Google Analytics 4 on your own website or find a small freelance client you could work on and you can gain a lot of experience. In fact, Google offers the tool for free and they also offer a free certification course. I've gone through it, it's pretty in-depth. You'll come out of it. Um, pretty well versed in the tool. So uh, combine that with just playing around in the tool a lot and you'll get really good. Number three, the third skill that you need to develop is communication and people skills. You see a lot of people make the mistake of overlooking this and they just think that being really technically skilled 
is enough. And if you just do the work, it's enough. Well, newsflash, I learned the hard way that it's not. I've gotten a lot of feedback over the years that I could do better being confident, being concise, being communicative uh, when I present this to business leaders, to clients, to other people, to team members. Because knowing the skills is one thing, but not stumbling over your words, not speaking crisply, concisely, clearly, and not being able to tie what your work is to why they care, their overall goals, it really matters. I remember one time I got some feedback after, um, and I welcomed that feedback, but um, I still got some feedback afterwards that, hey, you shouldn't have dove right into these numbers and spreadsheets because it, it was way too much. These business leaders, it went way over their head. It was too technical and they, they lost the message. So you really have to understand how can you communicate this well and how can you digest it and, and put it into a story so that they, they can actually grasp it. People love storytelling. So communication skills is probably one of the most overlooked but highly impactful skills in this profession. The fourth skill that I want to cover is business and strategy skills. So it's kind of related to communication skills, but you really need to be able to tie everything that you've said back together to high level business and strategy, organizational goals, team goals, leadership goals, and what your other teammates are doing. This is another area that I've learned over the years that I need to work on and I'm still working on. But you can't just work in a silo and just do things as an order taker. And um, if you want to progress to that senior level, that, a higher level in this role, uh, you need to be able to tie and understand and speak to these things in a way that makes sense. Uh, another little story about how you know I did something in a you know client meeting and then I got feedback in my uh, you know, performance review about is. Um, I was told that you should have been able to present what you said at a strategic level speaking to where the clients and business leaders were. So I failed to notice um, that the client's goals had changed from increasing revenue to more so kind of user experience, site optimization, marketing automation goals because I was so dead set on return on investment always being the highest priority for many businesses. But I wasn't contextual, I wasn't in tune and aware enough, and therefore I kept speaking to these revenue goals without realizing that things have shifted. So you really have to constantly be keeping your ears open. There's a reason you have two ears and only one mouth. You need to listen more. So business and strategy is something that if you're out of whack with a client or someone you're helping, it's not going to sink. They're not gonna have a good impress impression of you. And then the last, but arguably most important skill is uh, marketing skills, advertising and SEO specifically. And uh, one way that you can work on these and get better at these is by actually going out there and either finding your own side hustle, you know, or finding some ways, some small passion projects or small clients on freelance sites to work on and help them a bit with their advertising or SEO, or even you can start something yourself where you're just running a little bit of ads on Facebook ads just to see how they work. You may have to invest a bit of money, but by understanding the fundamentals about how to use these skills, you can actually speak to them well. Because at the end of the day, uh, while a business does a lot of things online, fundamentally they're usually running some type of advertisements and they're doing SEO optimization because those are the most uh, popular ways uh, and most effective ways of driving traffic to your site through search engines and through ads on Facebook or Google. And therefore, if you don't understand fundamentally how they work and you have real world experience, you're not gonna be able to speak on them and you're gonna be perceived as someone who's kind of out of touch and really doesn't understand what's going on there. So. I want to mention a few free resources as well as some uh, you know, paid resources to get you going in these areas so that you're ahead of the pack and you're actually pretty good at these skills. A lot of these things mentioned today can be self-taught. So once again, for the 
uh, Google Suite, it's really good. Um, so you have that uh, certification course, Google Analytics. If you search on uh, uh, Google, you you'll be able to find that for free. You can install and play with Google Looker, Google Looker Studio for your data visualization skills on your own for free through Google's Looker Studio website. They have free sample data that you can play with and then alter and uh, tweak to create your own charts. Get really good at that. Don't just get like surface level, but if you can get really good at that, it will really help you stand out from most people you're competing with uh, when you're applying to jobs because most people are simply job seekers and they don't know any better and uh, they're very entry level. They never played with these tools. So you can really stand out from your competitors when you apply to these jobs. Now for marketing skills like advertising and SEO, there's so many websites that offer uh, everything you possibly need to know for free. Um, that's the kind of beauty of these industries where I taught myself SEO. There's websites like neilpatel.com, marketingland.com, and then there's even podcasts like Marketing School that teach you not only the fundamentals from A to Z of SEO, but if you want, you can go more advanced. Another one I love is Brian Dean's website, backlinko.com. And so you don't need to get to the advanced level at these, but you need to be able to speak to them on a fundamental level. And the best way of doing that is not only just reading and consuming this content, but actually trying it out. As mentioned, you can build your own website. You can build your own little t-shirt e-commerce site and then run ads to it. And then also try and SEO optimize it to get traffic to it. And then it's just enough so that you can get a fundamental understanding. If you can get some sales and stuff, that'd be great, but it's not necessary to just uh, get out there. And then the real hack, if you can do so, is to get real experience with real clients. So I've seen a lot of people do this where they get internships at marketing art agencies, digital marketing agencies. And then all of a sudden you can put on your resume and not only your resume, but your brain, you now have real world experience and skill set with a bunch of different clients because you've interned for this agency and they've let you work with all these real clients. Maybe one day it's an e-commerce uh, client. Another day it's a sports apparel uh, client. And you get this real world experience. You actually see the tools in action. And that's really a cheat code because um, that will get you ahead of most job seekers who are just completely entry level, have nothing but theoretical experience or no experience at all. And it will really set you apart. My last tip for you is out of all these skills, I think the one that really separates this role of a digital marketing data analyst from your typical digital marketing strategist role is the data visualization and analytics tools. The strategist may know something about advertising and SEO and marketing, but they typically have no idea how to pull that all together into a data viz tool like Google Looker Studio or Tableau or Power BI or something like that. If you can write that on your resume um, and then sh prove that you have it, you'll stand out a lot because a lot of these roles are looking for these things and no one has these ex this experience. So best of luck, like and subscribe.